Hi everyone again. So uh, today I'm going to continue start my in fact start my first presentation related to uh, speech errors as a continuation of my previous presentation that already explained the speech production process. So uh, uh, I'm going to talk about speech uh, errors. Okay. Now, as a background for this presentation, the analysis of speech errors has a long history in both psychology and psycholinguistics. It's not new. Sigmund Freud, for example, considers them as a window into the unconscious mind. He also states that, or claims that, they reveal people's true inner thoughts. Modern psycholinguists postulate that they reflect breakdowns in different components of the speech production process. In other words, the modern psycholinguists use these uh, speech errors as evidence of breakdowns in the various components of the speech production process. <coughs> psycholinguists claim that speech errors provide useful information about how different components of the speech production system work. <coughs> speech errors can be used to inform our understanding of the speech production process because they are not random and this is what we're going to see later on speech errors they happen in an organized way and they happen to respect rules and some constraints these patterns can be related back to aspects of the speech production process so according to Dell 1986 Slips of the tongue can be seen as products of the productivity of language. A slip is an unintended novelty. Word errors create syntactic novelties. Morphemic errors create novel words, and sound errors create novel but phonologically legal combinations of sounds. Slips of the tongue occur in a systematic in systematic patterns. Speech errors provide information about how different components of the production system work. First example of speech error we're going to talk about is referred to as semantic substitution. It is one kind of error that people might produce when speaking under time pressure. Instead of saying, for instance, psycholinguistics, they can say sociolinguistics. And this, uh, as an example, uh, happened to me. Uh, in my previous presentation, so instead of referring or using the word psycholinguistics, I use the word sociolinguistics because of time pressures. This type of speech error likely reflects the conceptual preparation or lexical selection component of the speech production process. Semantic substitutions could reflect conceptual preparation if an individual mistakenly focuses on the wrong non-linguistic concepts. Semantic com substitution can take place at different places in the abstract uh, level of the speech production process. They either can take place at the conceptual preparation component or can take place at, during the lexical selection component of the speech production process. <coughs> Alternatively, semantic substitution can reflect the way non-linguistic concepts are related to one another and how the activation of non-linguistic concepts is tied to the activation of lemmas. Semantic substitution can also reflect lemma selection errors rather than concept selection errors because activating a non-linguistic concept will feed activation to lemmas that are associated with that concept. So here in this uh, small uh, sentence uh, we have a summary of the two types of uh, semantic substitution. You can have something semantic uh, substitution taking place at the concept selection uh, component. It is a kind of concept selection error that takes place when you are thinking about the concept. So instead of selecting the concept psycholinguistics, you select the concept of sociolinguistics. Or semantic substitution can take place at the level of the lemma. Instead of that, uh, uh, it can, uh, in the sense that the semantic substitution can reflect lemma selection errors. The next 
kind of a uh, speech error is referred to as sound exchanges. Sound exchanges is another kind of speech error that reflects a stage of processing after a set of lemmas and morphemes has been activated. But before an, articul an articulatory plan has been compiled. Sometimes a correct set of phonemes is produced, but some phonemes appear in the wrong positions in the utterance. Instead of saying big feet, one says fig beat, pause and motley 1974. Sound exchanges almost always respect the positional constraint. And here is one example of how speech errors respect, are organized and respect rules and constraints. For example, in this regard, this kind of speech error respect the positional constraint. When sounds trade places, or when we exchange or sounds exchange places in speech errors, they almost always come from the same part of the word, usually the first phoneme. For example, big feet, and we say fig beat. So uh, we are we have error taking place at the level of the first sounds of each word of these. But we can't have something say uh, like tig fi. This is an example of positional constraint uh, as a rule for uh, sound exchange errors. <coughs> the so before I continue with the word exchanges, uh, we have uh, a, small, a small passage that I want to read for you. Uh, related to uh, sound exchanges. Let me uh, find the slide first and then I go and read that passage for you because it's really nice and summarizes the uh, issues taking place uh, in sound exchange errors. So, uh, in their 1986 production model, the positional constraint reflects the way Individual phonemes are activated and inserted into frames, syllable length, mental representations, possibly as in Levels model. According to the model, a number of frames can be activated simultaneously. So when you are planning for big feet, you activate two syllable frames and you activate the phonemes you need to fill in those frames. Each of those phonemes is marked with an order tag, which tells the production system which phoneme comes first, which comes second, and so on. Because two syllable frames are activated simultaneously, and two phonemes that have first order tags are also activated simultaneously, sometimes the production system will confuse the two and select the wrong phoneme for each of the two available first phoneme slots. Normally, the activation levels for the two first phonemes will differ at different points in time. Generally, the buff phoneme we have more activation early in the planning process and the F phoneme will have more activation later and so mistakes will be relatively rare but sometimes if the activation levels of the first of the two first phonemes are also close enough they will get reversed and hence the sound exchange error most errors respect the positional constraint because the production system will not jam a phoneme with the first positional tag into the slot labeled last and vice versa. Further, most sound exchanges involve two phonemes from the same phrase. This suggests that the articulatory plan is built for no more than one phrase at a time. So this passage nicely explains the, uh, this kind of sound chain exchange error. And now we continue with Another similar, but uh, at a different level, uh, error, which is referred to as word exchange. Word exchange errors happen when a word that should have appeared in a one position is produced in a different position. For example, instead of saying, my friend plays the piano, and the time pressure, sometimes people can say, my piano plays the friend. So we reverse the order of the words here. So here we talk about some exchanges, not in terms of sounds, or for an ease, but we talk about exchange errors in terms of uh, words into uh, sentences. The majority of word exchange errors respect the category constraint uh, as well. So here another example of how uh, speech errors are or organized and respect some patterns and some rules and constraints. 
For example, here the word exchange, they respect the category constraint postulated by Dell 1986 and Postman 2000. Most of the time, when two words participate in an exchange, that is to say, when we exchange words, they come from these words that are exchanged, that have been exchanged, come from the same category, that say the same part of speech. So therefore, we can exchange word, nouns with nouns, verbs with uh, verbs, or or uh, uh, adjectives with adjectives, that say words from the same grammatical category, part of speech. We can't exchange verbs with nouns, and so on and so forth. So here, an example of how, again, uh, speech errors uh, can uh, be organized and respect some rules and constraints. Let me read for you another passage that nicely again uh, summarize uh, this uh, word exchange, these word exchange errors. According to Frame and Slot models, Garrett 1975, McCain 1972, speech involves a degree of advanced planning. Rather than planning a word at a time, we can lay out the frame for an entire clause or sentence as we are looking for a particular set of words and the precise forms we need to produce those words. This frame consists of a set of slots, places for individual words to go, and each slot is labeled for the kind of word that has to appear there, noun, verb, adjective, and so on. As with sound exchange errors, word exchanges happen when more than one candidate is activated simultaneously. More than one candidate has the same tag, noun, for example. And the production system assigns the wrong candidate to an open slot. Because the slots are labeled, however, the production system does not get the categories wrong. Verbs do not appear in noun slots. Nouns do not appear in the preposition slots. Prepositions do not appear in verb slots, and so on and so forth. So these are a few uh, examples of uh, different types of speech errors and how these speech errors have been used in order to explain the speech production process. So thank you very much again and see you next presentation. Thank you.